folks. So, um, I was, I've really been thinking about 2020 and everything that's happened in just the past 12 months. I know we're into 2021 now, but, uh, we're definitely not running at a normal in a normal way, I guess would be the, the way I would think to put that. So, I've been thinking about the past 12 months, and I don't know if I've shared this with you guys before, but I guess the thing that I've tried to live by in the past... 12 months especially is you really just can't be surprised like you may not have seen it coming but it might as well have happened um give you a case in point and like okay I don't care where you come down on the political aisle you can be very anti-Trump and still think that impeachment is a waste of time for a number of reasons, especially at this point in the political game with everything that's going on. The guy's out of the office, and when the impeachment proceedings were announced, he was going to be out of the office in two weeks, I think. So, whether you 100% agree with the impeachment proceedings or not... I don't particularly see any gain in impeaching him, whether it's successful or not. I see it as elected officials using time that could be spent on better things playing partisan politics. That's the way I see it. And I could be wrong, you know. I would imagine that there are some people of principle in elected office, but I would also wager that there are they are somewhat scarce. So I think that the nature of the the political machine in DC is not necessarily designed but angled to corrupt and it doesn't surprise me when I see people turn their backs on their original campaign promises and and their original campaign platform to run where the political winds blow. But I think that impeachment is a waste of time. And I didn't vote for Trump this go-around. I voted for him first time because I thought that D.C. simply needed a political outsider and... I wasn't pulling for him in the primaries. I was a Carson guy. So, I think that D.C. needed outsider influence. And Carson was out before my state uh, did the caucus in or for the 2016 election. So, I hadn't really given much thought to who my backup candidate is because Carson kind of imploded in the matter of three, four days as a candidate, so I had, I wasn't thinking backup candidate, but I didn't vote for Trump this go around. My state is a uh, very diehard Republican. They go, there are two counties in the past two elections that did not go to Trump. And it went to Trump, or it went to Trump by an overwhelming majority. So I voted for Jorgensen. 
I think that she, well, she did align most with my beliefs on things. The only thing that of hers that I didn't necessarily agree with the most was her stance on abortion. But in her opinion, which is kind of mine, government should only be big enough to protect the people that elect it. And and defend its borders. And so aside from that, she won a government out of a lot of stuff. And so on the abortion issue, she wanted that to be a state's rights issue, not a Supreme Court decision. And she also wanted government to be out of subsidizing abortion through taxpayer funding to organizations such as Planned Parenthood. So I was okay with all that because she didn't want the government sponsoring it and she wanted it to be a state's rights issue, not a uh, federal mandate. And I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway, I just, back to what I was saying, I just think that the, the impeachment process that is going on is a total waste of time because they might get Trump out of office a handful of days early and then have a president, Mike Pence. That's, and the only other thing that they could hope for is if Trump is impeached in the Senate, he would be unable to run for any federal elected office again, which I think by the time his, by the time Biden's first term is up, Trump would be 78, I believe. So, I don't see that being a particularly good idea, much less one that would appeal to him, especially when you consider the drama that he's had, and in many cases, the way he's been treated. When Trump was elected, they were proposing, and impeachment was something that was on the table before Trump ever put pen to paper in signing executive order or legislation that had come through the House and Senate. So, they definitely wanted him out of there from the word go. Impeachment was on the table like, I, I forget where I, when I, when it exactly happened, but they were talking impeachment, I believe, like a day or two after the inauguration, which the inauguration, sure, you're president, but um, you do go, th like you don't have stuff sitting on your desk waiting for your approval that day. There's the inauguration ball, the dance, and so the inauguration day is a big pomp and circumstance thing that you go through, and then on top of that, once you get into the Oval Office, Secret Service does train you on the emergency procedures in the White House, security measures available to you, uh, protocol for dealing with Secret Service. One of the more interesting books that I ever read was by a former Secret Serviceman named Joseph Petro. He served in the Secret Service for a number of years, and he was on presidential protection detail, um, meaning that he wasn't uh, <clears throat> that he was close to the president quite a bit during the majority of the Reagan administration. Possibly even all of it. But anyway. Uh, case in point example, some of the things I'm talking about, Joseph Petro, in his book, he didn't give away any secrets. First off, I want to make that very clear. But he said if an average citizen was walking through the White House and trying to go through doors, that the 
the doors would not, an unlocked door would be something that they couldn't beat. If you had an agent's permission to approach an unlocked presidential limousine and you went to just, you know, open it up and jump in just to see what it's like to sit in the back of the presidential limo that you could not get in even if it was unlocked. There was always a trick to the door handles. He went through some of the the things that did happen as far as like the uh, like the SOP so like when the president does travel out of town how they scout the site look for their evacuation routes look for uh, places that a potential threat might come from how they would uh, deal with keeping the president in a hotel things of that nature Um, so there's a lot of, well, it, it would just stand to reason that there is a lot of briefing just from the Secret Service on procedure and protocols and security that's in place for the president before he's allowed to do stuff. So, but they were talking about impeachment of Donald Trump long before he was putting pen to paper, which I find ridiculous because at that point he hadn't done anything to tick him off except to win an election. But what I, one of the things I was going to say about this, the past 12 months, is <clears throat> if you plopped down sworn affidavits, photographic evidence, basically, you know, a thousand pages of inarguable proof of Donald Trump tried to steal the election and failed, Joe Biden tried to steal the election and won, uh, that Trump's in bed with the Russians, that Biden's in bed with the uh, Chinese, uh, uh, pick it, you know, I don't care, but you could plop down you know, proof, 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 not just, you know, Trump, Russia, possible collusion, Trump, Russia, possible collusion, and it wouldn't surprise me, so, anyway, I reckon that's what I got for today, folks, I'm back in my car, life is good, I'm driving a two-lane road right now, getting 43 miles a gallon. So, what more could a guy with a long commute ask for? Catch y'all later.